I've been on the path of awareness, I guess, for almost 30 years. Gradually, it's been sort of, I've, I was introduced to Law of Attraction a long, long time ago. I just didn't know that's what it was called. And I come from a background with a lot of negativity. So I've had to overcome, well, learn to turn the other way and go downstream and work on just focusing on going downstream. And in the past, I've made a lot of progress. And in the past 16 years especially, I've noticed that a lot of the issues seem to manifest in my body as physical conditions. And it seems like as soon as I address one issue, another one pops up, another one... As soon as I address that, another one pops up. Well, that's because resistance will continue to show itself to you as long as it's active. We're going to interrupt briefly and then we'll listen to you. When you talk about the past and the things that you've overcome, in the moment of that conversation, you're not overcoming them, you're activating them again. It's such an interesting thing. You just can't remember how much better it is now than then without even the word better has a little trip in it because better than, better than this. So there's an automatic activating of what you've overcome when you have the conversation that you just had with us. And it really is as simple as that. When you stop talking about your past, then your present and more important, the true now becomes dominant. It's the reason that we playfully nitpick about the difference between the word gratitude and appreciation because when you're grateful for something you're usually grateful about what you've overcome and what you've overcome is then active in your vibration so for the moment of that conversation you're not overcoming it you're bringing it back into your experience again now we don't want to give you the feeling that it's really treacherous and tricky and that you have to be really careful about things but it's treacherous and tricky and you have to be really careful about the <laughs> Because those thoughts of the past would stay in the past if you didn't keep bringing them forward. Esther said to one of her grandchildren the other day, were you there when that happened? No, I've just heard about it several times. In other words, you don't even have to be present for some ongoing story to begin to be activated in your vibration. That's why so many of the memorials and monuments about the atrocities that have happened are not helpful to your current society because it keeps bringing forward. Our friend said, my past is creeping up on me. It's not creeping up on you. It's barreling in on you. You bring it fully forward in the now. So currently, for the last three years, I've been experiencing... Some... The last three years isn't current. Well... <laughs> Currently, meaning the latest. The, what, the well, more current than the yeah. 16 years, but it's still not current. <laughs> and you still don't need to activate it. You can't get to where you want to go as long as you right. are constantly assessing what's going on. We're not wanting to be hard on you, but that's what we were talking about earlier today. What's happening right now is what feels present tense is old residual it's just the manifestation of the old vibrational residual so isn't it logical that as you clean up the vibration that then in time you'll move past all of that here's a good way to look at it so imagine for a moment that when you open your mouth and breathe that you emit a red inky mist into your atmosphere right in front of your face and let's call it concern about something. So everywhere you go, you're engulfed in this red inky mist and you say, it's just everywhere I go and it's just been there as long as I can remember. But in the moment that you stop renewing it and releasing it new, it will start to dissipate and in a little while you'll be out of the red inky mist. It won't creep up on you. It's not lurking back there waiting till you're not looking and then it's going to come and consume you. It's real time something that you are creating. And the thing that is hard to understand about this is that it feels like it is the past 
that you're just remembering, but you're making the past your present, and so it's still your point of attraction. So that's why your resistance just squirts out in another way, and another way, and another way. You get it resolved. You go to someone and you get some remedy. So now, even though you have resistance, your belief is that you've solved this problem. But then something that you haven't even thought about, it shows up in that way. And then you get a remedy for that and it solves that problem. But then something that you're not even thinking about, it shows up in that way because resistance will find its way into your immediate experience. It just does. So I've been following some of your advice because I find that if I focus on healing it, it just activates that more. Because so, you picked up the stick. Healing right. on one end, what needs to be healed on the other. Right. So I focus on other things. I focus on things that I enjoy doing Perfect. to distract myself from that. And I've been... I've, Even in the way you said distract makes it sound like I'm just distracted from this thing that's screaming at me. Well, I... Distract. I, well, I'm I feel the pain. It's hard. Not, it's hard. Well, we know that. Yeah. We know that for sure. Yeah. That it's not easy to not notice right. something where there's a manifestation that's getting your attention. But you know what you can do? Because we know that you've heard us here today. Yeah. You can make a distinction between the, in this moment, physical manifestation of pain and the, in this moment, which is the same moment, awareness of better feeling emotion. It's like this pain is the catching up of previous vibration and previous emotion. And now, rather than reacting to the pain and letting the pain control my current emotion, I'm going to accept the pain as past momentum and I'm going to find a different emotion in the process. Here's another way of looking at this. You're going to hear this. This will help you. Today we were talking about where your inner being is in terms of vibration and where you might be in relationship to it and how your inner being is always calling you into that clarity, into that vitality, into that resiliency, into that recovery isn't the best word, into that renewal, into that replenishment. Your inner being is there and calling you there. And you're wherever you are and you're having the sensation of being called from wherever you are. So then we were talking about how your inner being will not have empathy. Your inner being will not join you in your pain. Your inner being is in the new vibration, aware of you and where you are, but not joining you in the pain. So that's why you have the opportunity to find a vibration that's different than the pain would actually logically cause you to feel. In other words, you can feel different than the pain is sort of demanding. You can. The other day we had a conversation with someone who was talking about the financial market. And we had just had the conversation about the difference between compassion, which is where your inner being is, and empathy, which is where most of your friends are. Your friends will empathize with you but your inner being won't. So your inner being stays in that compassionate, which means aware of you, but still high vibration regarding you state all the time. So we said to this man who was talking about the financial market, he was saying it felt to him like there are things that he can control, like maybe his thoughts, but it felt like there are bigger things that he can't control, like the financial market. It felt like there was a bigger force that he was having a reaction to. And it felt normal to him to have a reaction to this bigger force, to this situation that he didn't feel he had any control over. And we said, do you think that you could have compassion for the market? Sort of got his attention. In other words, instead of empathizing with the market and worrying about it, do what your inner being does. Know what you want, let the market be what it is, but don't let the market cause you to react. You heard that. So we're asking the same thing of you. Can you have compassion for your pain? Not empathy, which means not doing anything about adjusting your vibration, but understanding, understanding it, compassion for it, understanding that it exists, but not letting it get you emotionally down. How do you do that? Well, you do it by wanting to feel better emotionally. In other words, one of the biggest debilitating factors of pain is that you get depressed over it, you get discouraged, you get worn out, where if you can find the replenishment of alignment anyway, then in that replenishment mode, your pain will begin to subside.
Don't you know from your own experience that we're asking all of you to think about this, that if you've been in some resistance for a while and something's happened where your resistance has really been kicked into high gear because of something you're observing or something that happened or something that somebody says to you, doesn't your pain become more acute under those conditions? Isn't your pain more acute when you feel negative? Doesn't your headache get worse? Don't you stub your toe more often when you're in a bad mood? Isn't that when you slam your finger in the drawer or cut your finger on something? There is an absolute correlation between what is manifesting in your experience and what your mood or attitude is. So we're asking you to not let your pain affect your mood so much. And a lot of people would disagree with us and they would say, it's not possible. I wish you could be in my body and feel this pain and then let's see how happy you are, is what they usually say. But what we want to say is, it's the only way out of this. You can't be in a situation where you're hurting and now emotionally responding to the hurt because your attention is upon the hurt and cause improvement. Something's got to distract you. Sometimes people go into a coma and it distracts them. Sometimes they sleep really a lot and that distracts them. Sometimes they find some topical thing that gives them some relief and they feel the relief of it. So you do anything you can to give yourself some actual physical relief from it, but most of all, do anything you can to give yourself some emotional relief from it. So you said, how do you do that? Well, you tell us which of these statements, we'll offer a series of them, feels more emotionally better or worse. So I've been hurting for a long time and it doesn't seem to be getting better. Worse. I've been hurting for a while, but I believe that improvement is possible. Better. So there's just a little relief in that. Sometimes I feel worse, sometimes I feel better. I'm looking forward to feeling better more often. There's just a little release in that. It doesn't matter how I got here. Now that I'm here, my desire is strong and I know that's going to help me. Because that's one thing about being in a place of physical pain. You're putting engine after engine after engine after engine after engine on the recovery part of your train. You are. And if you don't put a recovery engine and a disappointed engine at the same time, you will work your way out of this pain. It is our promise to you. So if I focus on things that I enjoy doing, like hobbies or, or other things, these are all valid and viable of course, channels. And because we may not have said this today, but let's say you have five things that matter to you, and one of them is working and the other four aren't. You could focus upon that one thing and let it be the reason for your connection, and the other four would improve immediately. Or... Conversely, you could have four things that are working well and one thing that isn't, and you could focus on the one thing that isn't, and the other four will start sort of devolving too. Because it doesn't matter what subject you use as your reason for alignment, it helps everything about you. Because all of these so-called issues, and that's a good word for them, they have, they have put a whole lot of clarification into your vibrational reality. And the universe, especially your inner being, is helping you to find your way to those improvements. But if you've got something that's really bothering you and it's got a lot of your attention, then even though your inner being is offering inspiration and points of attraction and impulses and even rendezvous with solutions, you can't find them because you're on a different vibrational wavelength. So you've got to get into the receiving mode in order to find progress. And it's hard to be in the receiving mode when you feel pain, but you still got to get in the receiving mode even though you feel pain by making a distinction. The pain is old news that's just catching up with me. And the emotion is current and it will catch up with me. In other words, improvement is on the way. I can't feel this much relief emotionally without physical improvement following. That's for sure. So how much time does it take? Because As much time as it takes you to release, to, to to release, release the resistance. The resistance. Mm -hmm. Because some people just argue incessantly for their limitations. And we understand why. What you do with each other 
you become masters at seeking and finding empathy with others. And a lot of your communication is so that you can connect with people and get them to know what you know. And so you use descriptive terms and you find analogies in order to try to get them to be able to relate to you. But this is something that you no longer want to relate to. What you want to relate to is the well-being. So it really is about just understanding how it works and then going after it in a new way.